Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. We've talked a lot about privacy issues and the concept of how much privacy you can expect outside of your home. So you're outside someplace and you could be anywhere. What, you know, conditions can there be for you to expect privacy? And I mentioned before that some states have got rules about eavesdropping that define it based upon if a conversation is taking place, are you a part of that conversation? And some states say you need to be, and some states say if you are, you still need the permission of the other people to record the conversation. And there's all kinds of different variations. Of course, there's 50 different states, and also there's different countries. And every time that topic comes up, people say, well, Steve, what about uh, surveillance cameras? And what about ring cameras? Ring cameras, that is the camera that you get that you mount at the front of your house, and it can even be integrated into a doorbell. It's a brand name. And as someone approaches your doorbell, they show up on camera, and it records the imagery and the sound, at least it's capable of. Whether you've got it set that way or not, that's another question. But the point is that someone walks up to your house, standing on your porch, and if they're talking, you have the capability of recording what they say, and they might not realize it. They don't recognize that you've got a ring camera. So people have said to me, Steve, well, in that case, all the ring cameras are illegal. They might be. A lot of times, technology does jump ahead of the law. So laws sometimes need to be reconfigured to match technology. And so I suspect that there will come a time in the future where some states are going to pass laws about that and possibly have carve out exceptions and say, well, if you walk up to somebody's house and you're standing on their porch, they have the right to have security cameras there. Okay, so here's the deal. This topic came up in Canada, but it came up in Canada in a situation involving a condominium, which also changes a bunch of the rules. But <laughs> at this point, we're talking about a few of my favorite things, and that is privacy issues, condominiums in Canada. So Ralph sent me the story, and Steve, check this out, from uh, Aaron Bernie, realestatemagazine.ca. That's the Canadian uh, website there. Ding dong, your doorbell camera must come down. That's the headline. The Court of Queen's Bench of Alberta recently added the growing case law on the issue of video surveillance in a decision. Following a break-in of her main floor unit through the patio doors, a unit owner in a condo association installed a security camera on the exterior of the building. She also installed a ring security camera to the front door of her unit, which enters into a common hallway servicing entrances to other units. The condominium corporation's bylaws prohibit owners from making additions, modifications, or alterations to the exterior of a unit or to the common property without first obtaining written consent from the board of directors. The bylaws also provide that owners shall not unreasonably interfere with the use and enjoyment of the common property by other owners or their visitors. Two things happening here. So she installs their camera. They say, number one, you installed the camera on a common element because you put it on a door. The outside of the door is not yours, or the outside of your unit is not yours. That's, that's owned by the condo association. Whether it's in the door, the door frame, it doesn't matter. Number two, people walking up and down that hallway, which they're allowed to do, are now appearing on your camera, and, and they'd prefer not to do that. Meanwhile, she did not seek permission from the board to install either of her cameras, and her neighbors ultimately submitted complaints to the effect that the doorbell camera was an unreasonable intrusion of their privacy. As a result, the board requested that she remove her doorbell camera as it considered the installation to be in contravention of the corporation's bylaws. She refused, and the matter was put to the owners as a whole at a meeting of the corporation. They unanimously agreed with the neighbors that the presence of the camera caused them significant discomfort. She continued to resist, and the matter ended up in court. And so now they're in court, and you might say, Steve, what right does a condo association have to take you to court? Well, if you break their rules, their rules are bylaws. The bylaws are something you agreed to abide by when you bought in, and those bylaws can be enforced in court. Usually the bylaws say so. So there you go. In a written decision, the justice held that the board acted reasonably in requesting that she remove the camera. The reasoning was that she had violated the bylaws by installing the camera without obtaining permission from the board. The justice confirmed that the front door of the unit was, per the condominium plan boundaries, common property and not part of her unit, such that she was not entitled to install the camera without the board's approval. 
Doing so constituted an addition or alteration of the common property. He dismissed the uh, owner's claims of oppression by the board and ordered her to remove the camera. The decision is one of the first of its kind in Alberta, but is in keeping with earlier decisions from British Columbia's Civil Resolution Tribunal, which also found that doorbell cameras may be considered alterations or modifications of common property. So the topic has come up before in the setting of condo associations in Canada. Further, while the Personal Information Protection Act does not apply to individuals such as this, but only to private organizations, uh, the justice concluded that the doorbell camera could, and in this case did, constitute an unreasonable interference with the use and enjoyment of the common property by other owners and could conceivably be considered a nuisance. In the opinion, he wrote, the tort of private nuisance can involve material injury to property or be less tangible and result in discomfort or inconvenience. Accordingly, it is clear that the term use and enjoyment refers to both the use of the property and the experience of using the property. An unreasonable interference is one that would not be tolerated by the ordinary occupier. Now, while stopping short at finding that the tort of private nuisance had been made out on the facts, uh, the justice specifically found that an individual's discomfort in using the common property under such video surveillance is a normal feeling that a reasonable person would have in the same circumstances. In summary, the surveillance would not be tolerated by the ordinary occupier, and this is consistent with other decisions on the issue of security cameras. And I'll admit that that's, to me, a curious thing, because we're talking about a hallway, okay? And the hallway presumably has doors to different units up and down the hallway. And I presume that people simply have to go out their door down the hallway just to get out of the building. Unless they go out and are on the ground floor and then go out their back door or something. And so the idea that you're being surveilled as you walk down that hallway might be something that I would think that some people would say, yeah, it's kind of to be expected because we're no longer in our unit. We're outside our unit. We're simply heading out. Um, and a lot of places would have their own security cameras. But I guess there's a distinction there because if the condo association voted to put up security cameras and everyone was on board with it, then they'd have more, also more control over it, for instance, to what happened to the tapes and so on. In his conclusion, the justice noted that living in a multi-unit condominium requires tolerance, and purchasers of condominium units necessarily surrender some degree of proprietary independence. That being said, condominium corporations must be responsive to legitimate concerns of individual unit owners. And here you have a situation where you've got some tension. You've got one unit owner saying, I want to do this. This is what I want to do. You have all the other unit people saying, we don't want you to do that. And that's a situation where, well, the rules suggest that the majority wins on that. So, as a best practice, condo owners who wish to install security cameras should first check their corporation's bylaws to see if this is permitted, and when in doubt, request permission of the board in advance of installing any such device that captures images of other owners and residents. Condominium corporations, which are governed by old statute uh, in Canada, are already required to create privacy policies and have designated privacy officers. But in addition to crafting a policy regarding their own collection and use of video surveillance images, as this case instructs, condo corporations should also develop po uh, policies surrounding video camera installation by owners and residents. And uh, the author of this article, Aaron Burney, writes, In the end, living in a condominium is all about fairness. It involves trying to achieve a balance between the needs of the corporation as a whole and those the individuals that live in the property. And I mentioned before, I lived in a condo for a while, swore I would never do it again, haven't done it since. I was on the board for a little while, <laughs> swore I would never do it again, haven't done it since. And uh, But getting back to the bigger issue here that I think is important is that the idea that you can possibly run afoul of a law that is on the books by putting something on your own property that records images and sound is theoretically a possibility in some states. But you have to understand that for you to run into trouble on that, somebody would have to complain and say, this person's recording what's happening on their own front porch. <laughs> and not many people are gonna go, oh my gosh, let's all get up in arms about that. More people are gonna say, well, I guess that actually makes sense that they can record what's happening on their own front porch. So that's, I suspect, one of the primary things that, that the makers of those type of cameras were thinking when they put these things out there. 
because I remember seeing the inventor of the ring camera when he first appeared on Shark Tank. And he showed how the thing worked and it was a pretty cool idea. And I'm like, that's, that's a neat idea. Modern technology meets a concern we all have, security and so on. And one of the first things that occurred to me though was the idea that there's no one home, someone walks up to your front porch, and if they're talking, their words are being surreptitiously recorded. And I remember at the time thinking that technically is going to violate the law in some states, in some states. But it's also a situation where I think that no one could have foreseen that as a possibility 100 years ago. So uh, most of the statutes on eavesdropping were designed to address a situation where somebody is having a private conversation with somebody else. And they've taken steps to make sure that this situation remains private, remains private. So I go into a closed room with somebody else. We close the door. We're whispering. We're discussing something private amongst ourselves. And somebody has planted a listening device in the room. Most people would say, you know something, especially if the person who planted the device doesn't own the room, that that would be wrong. And most people would say, yes, that's something that makes complete sense. But who would have thought that somewhere down in the future, in the Jetsons age, <laughs> we'd have a thing about this big that you can put in the front of your house that looks like a doorbell. And as people walk up to it and they're about to press it, it starts recording video and audio. And you can be anywhere in the world and look at your phone and go, here's who I'm looking at and here's what they're saying. And so it is an issue. It is an issue. But I suspect that you're going to see a lot of states doing updates or carve outs or whatever you want to call it on the laws to say, well, this is not eavesdropping because it is a security camera on private property recording people who've approached the front door or back door of a house. And the owner of the house should certainly have the permission and the ability and the right to put that kind of a security camera there. And if you walk up to it and press the doorbell and say something you didn't want recorded, well, you shouldn't be speaking like that near my house. <laughs> so there you go. From realestatemagazine.ca, this story is out of Canada, but the condo owner put the ring camera up without the permission of the board, and without the permission of the association. And they said, you got to take it down. She said, no, went to court. And the court says, you lose, you lose. That's in the bylaws and the bylaws rule. And as I've said before, if you didn't want to live by those bylaws, you shouldn't have moved into the condo. So there you go. Ralph, thanks for sending it. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. Fear closes down our minds and our hearts.